Well, welcome back to Assen. We have a huge crowd here. Massive crowd has turned out, both of locals and British fans travelling abroad to take in the very finest of British Superbike action. The news from Swan Yamaha is Tommy Hill has not yet left the garage. We will see if he can make the pit lane for the start of the first British Superbikes race then. Let's go over to our commentators, James Whittam and Jack Burnicle. Well, from Barry Sheen's first ever 500cc Grand Prix win in 1975 to Chris Walker's memorable World Superbike victory in the wet here in 2006, the circuit van Drenthe at Assen has played an important part in the careers of many of Britain's road racing stars over the decades. And finally, the MCE British Superbike Championship arrives here in person. But unfortunately, possibly without Tommy Hill and Swan Yamaha for the first race. At the moment, he has a 10-point lead in the showdown over Josh Brooks, Taiko Suzuki, Shaky Byrne two points further back on Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki, Michael Laverty's Samsung Honda's fourth, ahead of pole setter Alex Lowe's WFR Honda in fifth, and Tommy Brightwell's supersonic BMW, suffering a bit from flu, Tommy that is, not the BMW. Seventh place for James Westmoreland on 125 points, running for that Superbike Cup, ahead of Ian Lowry on the Paget's Honda, Nori Hager, Swan Yamaha, Chris Walker on the Primo Bournemouth Kawasaki ahead of Stuart Easton who's qualified well here Alistair Seeley in 12th ahead of John Kirkham, Graham Gowland Michael Rutter, Patrick Moff 16th ahead of Peter Hickman who's qualified well for build-based BMW ahead of his teammate Barry Borrell another fast man this weekend Lucas Gasser and Dan Linfoot in 20th the starting grid looks like this, or should look like this. Alex Lowe's on pole for WFR Honda. Michael Laverty, Samsung Honda second. Honda 1-2-3. Uh, Honda 1-2, rather. That should read Jakob Smirts, of course, on the split lap. Redmond Aprilia in third place. A brilliant debut appearance in this championship by the Czechoslovakian rider. Josh Brooks held... Uh, uh, Josh Brooks, let me say that again, fronts up row two, ahead of Lucas Scassa, Shaky Byrne and Stuart Easton. Tommy Bridewell on row four, ahead of Peter Hickman, Patrick Muff and Barry Burrell. And John Kirkham, ahead of Noriyuki Haga, Robin Harms and James Westmoreland. Ahead of us, we have the first race for the MCE Insurance British Superbike Championship ever around this beautiful 2.83 mile circuit, the TT circuit Van Drenthe here in Assen in the north of Holland. And a great start from the front row of the grid for Michael Laverty. Second place for Jakob Kubersmerz from the Czech Republic making his debut in the series. Very, very nervous before the start, not really knowing what he was pitching himself into. He loves this place though, his first ever World Superbike pole was scored right here at Assen. He's running in second place. Josh Brooks third, and a Kawasaki already down. Two Something bikes down. Well, that's one of the GB Motors Hondas as well. I think that could be... I think that's either... Yeah, that could be... Number 67, Shaky Burn is up there. So too on Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki is the little Scotch Tommy Hill. Eastern. Here's Tommy Hill. Have they got that bike going well enough for him to get back in the race? He comes up pit lane. Everything to do then for the reigning British Superbike champion and Swan Yamaha. It's difficult to see what he's going to do from back there. He's almost half a lap behind Jacker. And, and he was saying just a minute ago that there was a crack in the chassis. Now, whether, I don't know, I don't know what he's doing out there, to be honest. Maybe he's just making sure it's all right for race two. Josh Brooks carves inside the split lap Redmond Aprilia then. Not surprising that Jakob Smert's going to get steered back a bit in the early stages. He's now running fourth just ahead of Stuart Easton as they come pouring down the fearfully fast and exciting return run towards the final chicane here at the TT circuit, Van Drenthe. The leader then, ooh, almost about to change then. Michael Laverty at the moment has the advantage. Remember Shaky Byrne coming back from that shoulder injury. He's just taken pain-killing tablets. He hasn't done anything more. It's not strapped up the right shoulder. Uh, he's just coping with it as he best he can. It was Tristan Palmer and Victor Cox, the two fallers we had earlier in the lap. Victor Cox making his debut in this championship. Uh, well, sure. what I mean is in the uh, Superbike races. Yep. What a shame then for the national super stock rider. At the front on the second of 18 laps, it's Laverty versus Byrne. Oh, Josh Brooks right Brooks. in there going wide, looking for some, uh, with some intent up the inside of the Kawasaki. Yeah, that's a classic move here uh, into the Struben. Just, uh, you run it wide uh, on the right and then that puts a look at... 
Chamber now up the inside. It's a fast piece of track and he's made it stick. That's a such a good move on a such a difficult place to pass. So Shaky Burton now has the advantage. Uh, shoulder injury? What shoulder injury? What his wife Petra has, has told me just this morning, James, is he's... Oh, and here we're looking at Tommy Hill. Well, he's got a huge amount of ground to make up. He'll also be feeling his way into the motorcycle, checking that everything's all right, James. Yeah, and you know what? It's a mountain to climb. He's got to make a decision whether he pushes on and chances crashing, trying to hard to catch people that really... I think he's got no chance of doing. Uh, and then if he does crash in this one, he's no chance of making race two. So he's really got... Uh, well, big decision to make for Tommy Hill. At the front then, Shaky Byrne, one of his major rivals, two-time British Superbike champion, is in the lead here at the TT circuit. Van Drenta, a lot of experience in World Superbikes and MotoGP round here, of course, Absolutely. for Shaky Byrne. Absolutely. And you know it's going to be fascinating, this, because it's been so hard on tyres. Rear tyres have been wearing out. It's not like they've been getting three or four good laps out and then they've been plateauing and been able to get, you know, 18 more laps. It's a fact is they've been going about maybe eight, nine, ten laps 12 maximum and then dropping off a cliff that's what the exact same was from Tommy Hill the tyres drop off a cliff and there's nothing left you can virtually you know you, you really lose a lot of grip and a lot of time so some people were going for the harder option some going for a soft option and, and wanted to get a bit of a gap so they had the cushion when it comes to that later end of the race so it's going to be fascinating this tyres are going to really play a factor well, Shaky Byrne was uh, very impressive during warm-up this morning, set the fastest time clearly as we watch Norrie Harker uh, flying through the pack, trying to get the better, oh, and getting the better of Lucas Casa, now the big former uh, it Italian superbike champion has been looking really impressive on the Padgett's Honda, but he suffers there at the hands of the red and yellow Yamaha. Yeah, Harker's another one, really impressive, you know, his, his, his collarbone is still smashed into about 15 pieces, and that's, that's not a joke, literally. There's lots of bits, he isn't healed. I said, well, it must hurt then. He said, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, look at this. What a move. Uh, that, the man losing out at that point was number 22, Alex Lowe's. At the front, it's Byrne, Laverty, Brooks. And uh, Brooks has made a mistake and slipped back. That's yeah. what's happened because Josh Brooks is no longer behind Laverty. He's just snapped his way underneath Alex Lowe's. Alex looking for a way through. Suddenly had to sit up the WFR Honda. And one thing I can tell you about, too, here comes Brooks up the inside of Bridewell. Oh! Good move. Josh making taking no prisoners. Move no. back to fourth place. Easton's having a good ride here, Jack. He is. He's running strong in third place. He said, well, uh, one of his projects for the last three rounds was to help out his teammate Shaky Bird by perhaps taking points off some of Shaky's rivals in the showdown. Yep. He's doing that right now. One thing I can tell you about tyres is number 22 uh, on the WFR Honda, Alex Laws. Look uh, at Brooks up the inside. Uh, he's, he has a hard option, rear tyre, so we are expecting, or I'm expecting Alex Laws not to be able to push at the beginning, but to have some better amount of grip left than most of the others on the softer tyres towards the end of the race. Interestingly, except for Tommy Hill, the showdown contenders are always up, uh, are all running up there in the top six. Only Stuart Easton in amongst them. Norrie Harger running seventh ahead of Skasa, Jakob Smert, and Danny Buchan having another barnstorming ride in tenth place in his rookie season in British Super half season in British Superbikes. Man on the move, here's Harger, you know, round right the back of the pack now. Norrie loves this place. He does, yeah. Yep. Traditionally, he's had, he's had some great rides around here in World Superbike. So, Norrie Hara looking, the Hager looking, injury or not, looking strong. There's number 22, Alex Lowe's, the WFR Honda posting pole position. He's just behind the other young gun in that top six, Tommy Bridewell. I mentioned that um, I, talk, I talked to Petra Byrne and uh, she said that what it is with Shaky is after a session, he's tired. He needs to sleep. Jenny Tinmouth pulls out, the young lady from Ellesmere Port on the sorrymate.com Hardinge Honda. So uh, we, we would, you would expect that Shaky will certainly need a nap after this one and before race two. Absolutely. Yeah, he also said that... Ooh. He also said that this is Shaky Burn. He also said that he's been trying to stay off the painkillers just so he didn't feel that, you know... Uh, what's the word? Spanked up, I guess. On, you know, he, can, he can dull you a little bit, can a lot. Yeah, he, he's taken some tablets this morning. He took nothing yesterday or Friday. He hasn't had it strapped up as he was anticipating he might need. So yeah. he's obviously feeling fairly comfortable just now. There he is, leading. Second place, number seven, Laverty. Third place, number three, Eastern. Fourth, number two on the Taiko Suzuki, Josh Brooks. And then Alex Lowe's has got the better there of Tommy Bridewell behind him. Quicker than the Honda down the straight. 
and not getting past though. That is a huge entrance, isn't it? At about 120 miles per hour into the Ruskin hook. Yeah, you, you, you kind of, you're trying to slow it down as well. Into you, you kind of, you, you're decelerating at about 120 around the right to get back to about 110, 100 for the left. It's a real awkward bit of track. Tommy Bride won number 46 on the supersonic BMW, the Italian team, of course, that was let down at the last moment by Anthony West when he went off to Moto2. There's Tommy Hill. A new lap record for Tommy Hill, 138.008. So Tommy Hill has decided that the Swan Yamaha is working. And, uh, of course, uh, if he could get himself back on the front row of the grid, even on pole position, that would be good for race two. Yeah, I think this is a BSB lap record, I think, because it yes. has to... It, yeah, so the fastest lap of today will all, always be the BSB lap record. He has just broke up the inside of Easton, nice as you like, into the Gert to Michigan. Josh Brooks then, with uh, number 22 there, hanging just behind Stuart Easton now, Alex Lowe's. Norrie Hager still looking strong. Lucas Scassa very much in the frame in eighth place. Jakob Smirts settled down now on the split last Redmond Aprilia in ninth. Danny Buck in tenth ahead of Westmoreland Muff. Robin Harms having a good ride on the yellow Dutes and motorsport bike as we watch Alex Lowe's trim it to the kerb, trying to find a way underneath Stuart Easton. He's got to be careful, but like I said, I know that Alex Lowe's has a harder option rear tyre, and I would expect that to last a little bit longer. And he's hanging in really well, you know. He said he was going to have to be really patient early on not to get dragged into something his tyres wouldn't allow him to do. Hager still threatening. World Superbikes, of course, a veteran uh, runner-up and third place man several times over during his World Superbike career. He's now in running in seventh place. Ahead of him, all the title contenders except Tommy Hill, who's running alone at the back at the moment, still behind Tom Grant. Uh, who's, oh, Tom Grant's now in the pit, is, so he'll yeah. soon be ahead of Tom Grant. The sixth lap of 18, so just about one third distance. Expect people to start sliding about if they've got the softer, softer option rear tyre after about between eight and 12 laps. Oh, Look Josh, at that. It's pushing on the, hard on the astroturf. He's <laughs> really forcing it. That was through the uh, main oh. mirror. Low straight up the inside of it. Quite a harsh move there on Stuart Easton. But it worked. He had to do it, I think. Well, Alex Lowe's told you that he was going to go out for it. He had that band's eye gleam in his eye when he <laughs> told you he was going to go out and enjoy it. So we haven't seen for about six months. <laughs> So, uh, and there goes Norrie Hargis sliding neatly past Tommy Bridewell. Tommy desperate to get himself perhaps a podium position. He's felt he needed a couple of podiums to uh, make his mark on the showdown, but he's just got squeezed back there into seventh place. Not feeling great. He says he's, he's just suffering a bit with a flu and a fever, and that's made him feel uh, not quite as physically up for it as he usually is. Yeah, but, uh, shaky burn at the moment with 0.3 of a second advantage, but that just might be coming down slightly. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Burn, I can tell you, actually, on the figures, uh, the last lap, Burn was slower than the, the slowest rider of the top four. Number three, Stuart Easton. Forming in front of the team owner Paul Bird, who's here this weekend to watch the Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki duo in action. Yeah, and it, you know when you watch Easton, it's just so smooth and so nice to, to watch a, a lovely economical style on the bike. No movement from the bike, just, yeah, lovely to watch. That's Tom Hill in the pits. So things haven't worked out for Tommy. He's come into the pits. Well, presumably, does that mean that there's something not right with the bike or the fact he's set a fast... No, there's something I, not right. I actually think he's gone out there, he's set a fast lap to get on the grid for race two, and he's checking the bikes all right, and he's actually telling him there's something not right. He's obviously got to use it now like a test session and get the bike as good as it can be for race two. That's Pete Jennings on the left, Gary Eckerold on the right, his crew chief and team manager, respectively. As we go back to the front, where yeah. Michael Laverty now is beginning to squeeze the pressure onto number 67, Shaky Burn. Shane Burn leads it. Yeah, and you see the first four there, Burn, Laverty, Brooks and Laws, uh, yeah, all title fighters. This is brilliant. So four of them running in line astern. Josh Brooks marginally the quickest on that lap. We're on the eighth lap of 18 here in the north of Holland. And uh, a lovely day, much more beautiful than they're enjoying down on the Algarve, where it's just about underwater. Yeah, we'll take his chances in northern Holland, eh? Well, we certainly have... We've, <laughs> <laughs> we've certainly enjoyed the chances we've taken so far. It was blowing a gale yesterday, but at least that kept the rain away most of the time. Shaky burn, still looking comfortable, James. There's no sign of that right shoulder bothering him thus far. 
Yeah, and I can tell you that Easton's uh, had an off-track excursion, been through the gravel, not crashed, got back on the track, but now he's down there in eight. Michael Laverty thinks about going underneath. That's into the uh, left-hander at Debault. Third gear, 80 mile an hour left-hander. Now, round the big turn at Mandeville. A 75 mile an hour second gear entry, but it opens out through uh, Dijkerschloot. Watch this, they really get up ahead of steam down here. Alistair Seeley was telling me this is just the most thrilling part of it the is, track and feels so it is. fast. Best part of any track in the world is this. He's so dished and so cambered in you, going so fast. And then this sweep round the ramps hook brings you back to the curtain, Jim of Chicane, where you've got to back up. It's still a quick entry, second gear, 70 mile an hour entry. They swoop through here and then across the finishing line where so many dramatic uh, climaxes have arisen in races. Yeah, that iconic Gert Jim of Chicane, it feels slow until you crash there and then it all seems to speed up a little bit. <laughs> 70 mile an hour on your backside does feel pretty quick, I've got to say. Gert Timmer, you might guess, of course, was a famous Dutch rider, but he actually rode for New Imperial in the 1930s, a famous British motorcycle manufacturer of the time. Have you had one? Never. <laughs> My dad might have. Yeah. He does a sidecar man, wasn't he? He did, he, did, boy. he did stick a sidecar on a solo bike he had, yes. Meant a radical altering of the gearing to accommodate a family. As we go down onto the back straight now, we're on the ninth lap out of 18, almost at half distance, and Michael Laverty, Samsung Honda, the blue and white Samsung Honda, has the advantage for the first time over the red and white Kawasaki. And you know what? Ooh, and I'm seeing Alex Laws now just starting to get his teeth into this. It could be an indication that I'm looking at the times just to see if the top three are dropping off. Because I do believe that the top three, that's Laverty, Byrne and Brooks, have softer rear tyres than Alex Laws, who is now right at the back of them. So what would you put your money on Alex then at this uh, yeah. point? If you know that he's got that harder tyre, that will that will definitely or ought to last better. That that was the plan. He should have more grip left at the end. It doesn't always work according to a plan like that, but that's what he's gone for. And the problem being, as Michael Laverty was saying, that the weather hasn't warmed up quite as much as they hoped it would. No. No, which gives them issues with tyres anyway. So Laverty, Byrne, Brooks, Lowe's drop into the Gert Timmer chicane. Harder is running fifth, Bridewell in sixth, Scasser impressively in seventh for the Padgett's Honda team. And they're the, they're the three running next as the next wave rolls across the line. Jakob Smertz in eighth place, Eastern ninth ahead of James Westmoreland in tenth. And remember, we're only just over half distance. This right is half lap. distance. Yes, yep. Laverty pushed his way to the front, but hasn't been able to uh, make any progress away from there. Shane Byrne still right with him. And Shane Byrne looks fairly comfortable sat there to me. He does. Just watch how his Kawasaki, just watch how Shane Byrne's Kawasaki, he, he turns it on the exit of the corners, he, he's able to turn it a little bit tighter and get the thing stood up and on the power. And I was oh, thinking he was going to make a move and he does, 120 mile an hour move through the inside at Ruskin Hook. But that started at, at uh, the Struven, you know, just because he got it sat up and driving really early. Michael Laverty hasn't seen his future brother-in-law, Chas Davies, since Chas won his maiden World Superbike race because Chas has been stopping over in Italy before the Portimao round. They're looking forward to welcoming him home in style at the beginning of next week. And I think Michael would rather like to join in the celebration with the race win here. Shane Burns really confident with the front of He can run really sort of wide entrances into corners and drop it in, uh, push, putting a lot of pressure on the front end. And he seems pretty confident to do that. Josh Brooks is again going to look keen to find a way past number seven, Michael Laverty. Shaky Burn does look, well, James, he topped both qualifying one and qualifying two. Yeah. Uh, he just got caught out a bit in the final qualifying session, but he had been quickest to lead. The Taiko Suzuki front wing pouring the air as he comes out of the Timmer chicane. And uh, Brooks, you know, is always going to be impatient to find a way through, but Laverty's strong on the brakes into turn one at Harbock. The top four, it's definitely Brooks that looks the most aggressive and up for it here. Norrie Harger is uh, running strongly in fifth ahead of Bridewell and Scasser. And uh, that wave is actually running almost the same time as the leaders, just back down the road. In fact, on the last lap, they were in the 38s, which except for Shaky Burn, the front four weren't. So Shaky has decided to try and open a gap on this. He's decided he has got the pace, he has got the 
well, the, the, the stickability to get on with it. Yeah, and he, you know, when he was sat behind Michael Laverty, the man in shot there, he, he looked comfortable and he looked like he was weighing it up a little bit and not stressed to be sat there doing that pace, you know? So much experience, the man, though. You know, like two seasons in with the sterile Garda Ducati team in World Superbikes involved good results here. And uh, also that season with Aprilia in MotoGP. He knows this circuit well. Yeah, and, and you know, after what happened last year, a lot of bad luck. He was uh, off the thing at Donington, which didn't get his showdown off to a good start. And then he had problems with the swing arm changes at, at Silverstone. And yeah, I think he really deserves a bit of luck, Shane Boo. Somewhere back downfield, by the way, Michael Rutter, who's lying in 19th place, is riding his 390th British Superbike race on the MSS Batham's Kawasaki. This is Tommy Pridewell coming under pressure now from the strong Italian Lucas Casa. Oh, oh, and that's Alex Lowe's. Lowe's. Alex Lowe's has got the better of Josh Brooks while we've been away. He suddenly snapped his way through to third place. He's looking for that second place. I hate to tell you... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. This could be an indication that he has got a bit more rear tyre left than the people he's racing with. I hope so, because I tell you what, they said about lap 12 it is, where between lap 10 and lap 12 it is where the softer. Look at Alex Lowe's going now, look at him. And he has got more grip. This, I, I tell you what, this is a mature decision for a rider who is the youngest and, and well, seemingly most immature out there. This oh, is and silliest. No, he isn't. He he, <laughs> I know he's not he anymore. He isn't. And we, we can't say that, you know, because I've got a lot of respect for somebody of his age and lacking in experience compared to the rest of them that he can take a decision on a tyre that will make him slower and have to put up with something that's difficult to ride early on. And was that Alex's decision on the team? Absolutely Alex's decision, yep. Well, he certainly made it pr Look at that. Point. Now, we're just coming up to two-thirds race distance. He's pushed his way through into second place. Remember, at the moment, he has 502 points. So he's uh, 23 points behind Josh Brooks and uh, 21 points behind Shaky Burns. So and this needs a good result, and he's going after Shaky now. Absolutely. And there's no one... Oh, Jakob Spurts, they split that Redmond bike. Where's the oil? Expired. Where is the oil? Can't see through there. Yeah, there's people coming through, so with a bit of luck, there isn't anything on the track. Oh, what a shame, because yep. uh, Kuba was having a good ride. Well, remember, he was running second in uh, sketchy conditions here at Aston in World Superbikes earlier this year when he crashed. And there's no way Josh Brooks and Michael Laverty would ever let Alex Lowe's go at this uh, stage in the race unless they had to do. And I think it's because of the tyres they're having to do. So now these two are going to be battling for the bronze medal by the looks of it in terms of this race because Shaky Byrne is going to have Alex Lowe's potentially for company. Uh, although on that last lap, Shaky was still a good was. three or four tenths quicker than Alex Lowe's. He has a 1.5 second advantage over the blue, white and red WFR Honda. And I think Skass has now got through. Oh, yeah, he's, he was there at the change of the lap anyway. Skass is now through to fifth. Lucas has been looking really belligerent and fast throughout the course of qualifying. He might take off after these guys if he's if he's got the tyre to do it. Uh, he possibly not got the pace to do it, I don't think, Jack, looking at the, uh, the timing screen. Oh, you're right. Here we go. Josh Brooks. Is that going to work? No. No. There's one thing, you, the, the award for persistence must always go to Josh when it comes to finding a way past somebody because he never gives up at any point. I'm going to say the boy just don't give up, does he? He enjoyed a weekend out at the Farley Castle Vets Motocross of Nations with his uh, his housemate Gordon Crockard last weekend, cheering Crockstar on. That was, after, that, that was after they both got over Gordon's sister's wedding on the Friday night. I think that was a fairly explosive Irish affair. You'd expect nothing less. Number seven, Laverty, talking about Northern Irishman. Well, ahead of the man now living over there, Josh Brooks, and running for the Taiko Suzuki team, for whom he's signed again next year. As they dance through a good chip, Timmer Chicane, and head once again on the Honda, quick on the drive. It is. Onto that main straight, yeah. down towards turn one. And all this, you know, is really bad news for Tommy Hill, because he's not out there, and what he would have liked is none of the, the other title fighters to be actually getting that many points, and they all are, pretty much. It's going to certainly tantalisingly balance the championship after this. Peter Hickman's gone out with a technical problem at turn one on the build-based BMW. Yeah, I can tell you, last lap they've just done, Burn was eight tenths quicker than second place man Alex Lowe's. Burn, barring 
an incident is going to win this. So perhaps Shaky went for that harder rear tyre. Perhaps I'll find out. I can, I can definitely find out. So Laverty, oh, with Josh Brooks sears his way through there into third place. Gets the better of Michael Laverty. Now he's got to hold on to that. That was the move that Laverty pinned on Shaky Burn earlier in the race. Laverty just looking again as they drop into that left-hander uh, to Rus at, uh, Ruskin Hook, then up to Steckenval. This is the battle going on behind Lucas Gasser, Tommy Bridewell, Norrie Hager. Hager beginning to feel the, the, the pace and the pain, perhaps, from that shoulder injury. And Tommy is now pressing Lucas Gasser on that orange and white bike. Well, if Shane Byrne can hold it together for another four laps, he's going to lead the championship, Jack. Oh, you've done some clever mental No, I haven't. It's, uh, James Hayden's just told me, right <laughs> down in big letters, that even I could read. <laughs> well done. Thank you, J.H. <laughs> so, Shaky Burn then, doing himself a power of good. He's uh, on to lap 14. He's over two-thirds race distance here. And he leads by 2.9 seconds, and extending 2.9 seconds for the Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki over Alex Lowe's, Josh Brooks, Michael Laverty and this battle, Lucas Scassa, Tommy Bridewell and Norrie Hager uh, running in the battle for fifth place and behind them James Westmoreland has now moved eighth Stuart Easton is ninth ahead of Patrick Muff Robin Harms and Barry Burrell having good rides, well Barry Burrell was telling me he was, he fell on the second last lap of a European Superstock 1000 race here a few years ago when he was lying in third place behind Claudio Corti and uh, he's always liked the place and gone well here. He's running in 12th out of John Kirkham, Ian Lowry and Danny Buchan. I actually don't know anybody who doesn't like this place to ride around. It's fantastic. 15th lap of 18, Shaky Burn, just under three seconds lead over Alex Lowe's. This is the battle for fifth place, Lucas Gasser, Tommy Bridewell and Norrie Hager. News from the garages that Tommy Hill did intend to stay out there. He, he wasn't using it just as trying to get a quick lap in for his grip position in race two and then come in. But there was a bad vibration with the bike. So actually, the fastest lap that, that he did earlier in this race was... Uh, yeah, now some lap with a big vibration problem. Here's Robin Harms, number 127. Although this is uh, Denmark versus Switzerland, the only Danish and Swiss riders respectively in the championship. Yeah, speaking of vibration problem there, Robin Harms. <laughs> Uh, Robin, who's well, he's certainly showing what the dudes at Motorsport Honda, that beautifully turned out yellow bike of Tom Tunstall's team, is capable of. He ran nearly three seconds quicker than team owner Tom during the course of qualifying, and uh, the former World Super Sport Tom, top ten runner is well and truly in the mix here, running in 11th place, but threatening to steal 10th as we watch Norrie Hager threatening the other supersonic BMW, and Alex Lowe's now under pressure from Brooks. Yeah. Where has Brooks found that from? And Scasser is now closing in a big way on Michael Laverty for fourth and lapping a second quicker a lap. And Laverty was worried about tyres. Yep. And at the moment we've got this is Alex. We're looking at Alex Lowe's with Josh Brooks suddenly clambering all over the back of the WFR Honda. And Scassa right on the tailpipe now of Michael Laverty. That, that's a done deal. I reckon Scassa's going to be through. There's no way Michael Laverty is going to let him do that unless he had to do. Streaking down the back straight now, 170 mile an hour fifth gear, and then this scorching entrance to the Ruskin hook. And then they swing left through that big chicane, and then there's a beautifully dished right hander here, and that's what? the offer that Wag Josh on. Brooks needed. He was going to dive underneath into the right hander, and he Made does it. Work. it. Yep. And then he flicks through towards Dippolt, up to 150, back to 80 miles an hour, slinging it through the left-hander. Behind him, Michael Lovett, oh, and Josh freewheeling his way round there, just loving it, the power just eating up that rear tyre. He's on the 16th lap of 18, and the Australian is now in second place. The Lincolnshireman pu pushed back to third. That's really weird, you know, that sort of seesaw to and fro. That's de it's definitely a tyre thing. Definitely a tyre thing, but it surprised me a little bit as that, that Alex Lowe's didn't, this is it, he set it up the corner before, look, not a lot of room there. That was, the, that was the sort of move that Jack Kennedy was producing during that thrilling uh, ride through the field yesterday in, in the British Super Sport race, sprint race. Now, as we charge through to complete lap 16, on to the 17th of 18, the penultimate lap of the race, Josh Brooks now second on bike number two, 22 Alex Lowe's in third. Michael Laverty still there in fourth place by 0.14 of a second over Scassa. Bridewell still clinging on to fifth ahead of Norrie Hager by a couple of hundredths. Scassa still stuck behind Michael Laverty and people queuing up behind him as well. I think that Hager and Bridewell are right there as well. That's what's astonishing is the way that Shaky Burns taken ownership of this race. Yep, Five absolutely, seconds ahead. Absolutely. So they exit... Uh, 
to Strubben and head down the back you can straight see. through the Wienschlang here. That's Brooks, that's Laws. We can see the background, there's a right fight going on between, ooh, still, he still is Laverty, then Skassa. Oh, and here's Norrie Hager. Hager dives underneath Lucas Skassa, and Norrie's fired up at this point in the race, and uh, looks as if he's aiming to see if he can nick some points off uh, Tommy Hill's title rivals, because he's got Michael Laverty right there ahead of him now. Look at him switching from uh, right to left to see if he can find a way past. He looked like Scassard had the pace, and then they got caught behind Laverty, and uh, Hager and Bridal are right with him again now. Now, I wonder what sort of uh, oh. overtaking manoeuvre Norrie might attempt here. He switches to the inside. Now, this is, yes, that was this is critical. Switch. This is a Dijkerschlut, and then they wind it up through Mervyn Mee. Here we go. Mervyn Mee. Mervyn and then he gets faster and faster as he goes railroading through here. That's what he learned from Ben Spees when Spees did it to him on the last lap of a World Superbike race. And well. Michael Laverty suddenly catapulted. Here's Scassa. And Scassa goes underneath Norrie Hager. Can he stop him? Can, can he, can he, he stop I can't. No, he can't. He yes, can't. He can't. He can't. The Paget Honda bursts through on the final lap. Number 99, Lucas Scassa crosses the line fifth. I beg your pardon, fourth, Bern Brooks Lowe's ahead of him. Scassa looking for a season's best result Look at this. for the former Italian Superbike champion. <laughs> This is it. Remember, he put uh, he put his parking go Yamaha on pole position for World Supersport here last year. He's pretty quick around this place on anything. Scassa leads uh, the battle for fourth place. Laverty is even under threat now from Tommy Bridewell. And Tommy will have a bit of a go. He needs the points. Shaky Burn, he's got the 25 points surely in the back. Number two. Psycho Suzuki's Josh Burn. Brooks still there ahead of Alex Lowe's. Now we've got Lucas Gasser. Looks as if the, the tall Italian just might, might have, have the speed yeah. to prevent Norrie having a dig, but he needs to... Oh, and look at... That's how he was riding, right through qualifying, really burning through those fast turns. I tell you what, if Norrie Hager can be close enough into the last chicane, he will have a go on the brakes, I'm sure. Here's Tommy Brightwell looking possibly to get underneath Michael Laverty, and he yep. does a cheeky move that Laverty's pulled on at least two rivals during the course of the race. I think Laverty was having a stab back there. As they went out of shot. No, Lucas Gasser will have Clark Paget bouncing up and down in pit lane. Great ride by the tall Italian. Shaky Burn uh, on his final lap leads the way into the Gert Timmer chicane. Great ride on the rapid solicitors Kawasaki. And uh, it pushes him into the championship lead. Shaky Burn monowheels across the line triumphantly here at Assen. Great ride by the former champion. He takes victory. Oh, Alex Lowe's tried to snatch back second place. Brooks takes it by 15 hundredths of a second. Great ride to fourth place for Lucas Casa. Fifth, Norrie Hager. Sixth, Bridewell. Seventh, Michael Laverty. And still going on down the field, we've got Westland, Eastern, Robin Hart. Westland, yep. eighth. And then this group crossed the line, Eastern in ninth. Great top ten finish for Tunstall's team. Robin Harms, tenth, ahead of Patrick Moff, Barry Burrell, John Kirkham, thirteenth. And uh, Tommy Hill in the pits, talking things over with Pete Jennings. And uh, a great ride, though, by Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki, the race winner in just a fraction under 30 minutes. I don't know how that shoulder's feeling, but I'll tell you what, Petra, I think he deserves a rest now. Let him have a nap in the motorhome, and he'll be ready for race two. Big Stuart Bland there is uh, kind of team manager, general crew chief, if you like. Looks very pleased with life, so too does Petra. Well, if you're going to come good, this is a time in the championship to do it. Philip Neil there congratulates Paul Bird, the two team owners respectively of Taiko Suzuki and Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki. And that, that was, uh, that's absolutely wide open, that championship. Wonderful race, great performance by Shaky Burn. And uh, a great ride by this man, Scatter. He looked strong throughout qualifying. Tommy Hill, I can't believe how well he's taken that. I hope okay. that he can... Uh, I hope they didn't have that bike absolutely ready and ripping for race two and that he can complete a race because he certainly deserves to do that. Number two, Josh Brooks, great recovery into second place for the Never Say Die Australian and the championship standings will be very, very intriguing indeed. This was the race result. Assen, race one, MCE British Hit Superbikes in association with Pirelli. Shaky Burn, Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki by just under five seconds from Josh Brooks, Taiko Suzuki, ahead of Alex Lowe's WFR Honda, Lucas Scassa, Paget's Honda, and Norrie Hargis, Swan Yamaha, poking themselves into the showdown proceedings ahead of Tommy Brown 
Bridewell and Michael Laverty. James Westmoreland in eighth. Ninth just for Stuart Easton ahead of the dashing Dane Robin Harms on the Dutes and Motorsport Honda. Supersonic BMW's Patrick Muff is 11th ahead of the surviving build-based BMW of Barry Borrell. John Kirkham's Samsung Honda ahead of Ian Lowry's Paget's Honda. And Chris Walker gets the final point for the primo Bournemouth Kawasaki team ahead of Buchan, Rutter, Harris, Seeley and Smart. The championship standings. Now, I, I haven't had a pen and paper. I haven't even been able to... This is how it looks. Oh, dear. Shaky Byrne takes the lead on 548 points with another race to come and bounding with confidence. Josh Brooks, second by three points on 545, is now 10 ahead of Tom Tommy Hill on the Swan Yamaha, who is 12 points ahead of Michael Laverty's Samsung Honda. Fifth for Alex Lowe's, five points further back on the WFR Honda, and therefore 30 points behind Shaky Burn. Tommy Bridewell is in sixth on 510. Westmoreland remains seventh ahead of Norrie Harger, Ian Lowry and Chris Walker. Tenth, eleventh for Stuart Easton ahead of Alistair Seeley now. John Kirkham, Graham Gowland, Michael Rutter, fifteenth ahead of Patrick Moff, Lucas Scassa now on 50 points, Hickman, Burrell and Linfoot. This was the start of the first 18-lap confrontation here at Assen. The first time the MCE Insurance British Championship arrived here. And Michael Laverty got the jump on fellow front row qualifier Jakob Smertz. Newcomer to the championship for Split Lath Redmond Aprilia. But quickly on to Laverty's tail was number 67, the red and white rapid solicitors Kawasaki of Shaky Burn. And Shaky Burn launched through as he went through the fast chicane at the end of the back straight but Tommy Hill had been fetched off on his way on to the starting grid he had to start from pit lane on a bent and battered R1 Yamaha number two Josh Brooks moves through ahead of number three Stuart Easton when Tommy Hill after setting fastest lap of the race has to settle for coming back into the pits Shaky Byrne leads the way, but Michael Laverty was having a look as they went into the left-hander at Ruskin Hook. He moved through back into the lead on the Samsung Honda. Number two, Josh Brooks running in third place. But Shaky Byrne got great drive through the Wienschlang onto the back straight, and he once more snatched the lead back, and this time began to pull away ahead of Alex Lowe's on the WFR Honda. Laverty starting to go backwards ahead of number two, Josh Brooks, but not for long. Brooks finally penetrated the Irishman's defence and he then made a move down into Steckenval, the backed right-hander. The Taiko Suzuki went through, back into second place. Meanwhile, Michael Laverty under real pressure from both Nori Haga and number 99, Luca Scassa. Luca rolled round the outside of the Samsung Honda as Shaky Burn, almost five seconds in the lead, injured shoulder or not, took a vital first race win to put himself top of the championship table after race one here at Assen. Second place for Josh Brooks, just from Alex Lowe's. The title chase wide open. Right, we are here in Park Firma. Let's grab a quick word with Shane Byrne. Five laps to go, you pulled the hammer. You were absolutely flying before that. What a time to put in one of your best performances of the year. Well, do you know, <laughs> we had a bit of a strategy, which, uh, which bearing in mind I got a bit of a, soul sh a sore shoulder was to, uh, was to follow, you know, whoever was, whoever was leading. But um, I got to the front quite quickly and thought, oh, I feel quite comfortable here. And then um, just rode around on the front for a bit. But then Michael come past and I thought, perfect. Gives me someone to follow. I can just settle down and relax. But when Michael was following me, my pit board said that Josh and Alex were coming and it got to like plus zero and I thought, oh no, Michael wasn't going quite so quick. So I thought, right, I've got to try and pass Michael and see if I can, you know, get Michael to, to hold the other two up. And fortunately, you know, it kind of, it kind of went exactly to plan, but uh, it's one of them races. They never, act, they never actually go according to plan, but that one did. So massive thanks to Paul Bird Motorsports, Rapid Solicitors. Great job. All my personal sponsors. Thanks to everybody. And Massive thanks to Dr. Funk for, for getting me back and, uh, you know, doing a good job with the shoulder. And the medics here this weekend do have helped me out as well. So, uh, How does the shoulder feel now? We were talking in, during the race about the uh, lack of painkillers that you were taking. How does it feel after such a hard workout? 
uh, right now I'm buzzing, so <laughs> you could probably kick me in the nuts and I wouldn't even feel it. But uh, no, for sure in an hour or so I'll be, I'll be a little bit sore. But, uh, you know, it, it sort of comes with the territory. I'm a motorbike racer, unfortunately. We get hurt now and again and uh, it's something we have to deal with. So uh, fingers crossed we can keep this kind of momentum into race two. Um, and hopefully Tommy will be okay as well. I don't really know what happened to him, but obviously we had a, we had a race to get on with, so maybe he'll be out there for race two. Yeah, brilliant ride. Well done, Shane. Look forward to the next race. Thank you very much. Shane Byrne there on Rashford Solicitor's Kawasaki. Uh, that's his fifth win of the year, and what a time to put that in here. What another what a time to put in another great result here from one of our younger riders in the top six, Alex Lowe's second podium of the year. I would argue that was a better performance than the one you did at Cadwell Park. Yeah, you know, it, it's just nice for me. You know, we got in the showdown, that was nice, and uh, now we're in the showdown. It's nice to be fighting with the boys that are at the, at the front, and uh, that's where we wanted to be all year, but we're there now, and yeah, I enjoyed that race. I went with a harder tyre, and uh, it, after sort of 15 laps, it, or 13, 14 laps, it dropped off. I didn't expect it to do that, so uh, that's all right. I'm not going to moan. I'm so happy with the podium, and uh, yeah, it's been a nice weekend so far, and I, hopefully we can make some changes in race two. We can uh, get on the podium again, or maybe go a bit better pushing uh, right up to the end. What did you learn from this race that you're going to take into the second? Um, I don't know really. I didn't expect them guys to be as fast at the end on the softer tyres, to, to be honest, but I don't know. I'm going to you know, maybe use a soft one and see if I can you know, go a bit faster at the start, but yeah, we'll see. I, I really enjoyed that. It was mega, and I pushed as hard as I could to the end, so uh, see what happens in the next one. Well done, Alex. Will you go to the podium? Cheers, mate. Thanks. Alex Lowe's there from Team WFR Honda. Now, second place finisher, Josh Brooks. Uh, Josh, you put in a couple of good, strong moves in there and you bagged another podium finish. Great for the overall championship. Were tyre tactics a big factor in that race? Yeah, I mean, I was a bit nervous going into the race whether to go with the one or the two, the harder or softer, you know, and um, I went with the softer one, the SC1, and um, after about half race distance, I started to feel a lot of sliding and I got passed by a few people and I was thinking, you know, I mean, I thought I'd have, have more at the end than, than the guys that I was around, but um, it still made it a very difficult race. So I'm um, quite pleased, you know, to be able to get back up to second. When Alex uh, Lowe's come past me, I thought maybe he'd just keep going because I knew he was on the SC2. I seen him on the grid. and um, But it also, uh, you know, faded towards the end. You know, it's not going to last forever. So um, I was actually able to, to maintain a better lap time than he was. So caught him up and passed him. That was quite satisfying to get back to second, you know, after after the mid, mid part of the race was actually getting passed by other people. So I'm um, a bit disappointed with second and mainly because I see Shaky, I didn't really have anything to, real any competition to him, you know. So that's a bit disappointing to see such a big gap, but um, but uh, quite happy with the with the bike and the team and, and my outfits to, to get back to second. So Yeah, you keep that podium momentum going. Brilliant double win at Donington Park. Another podium here in race with Aston. We'll let you go to the podium. Great ride. Well done, Josh. Yes, thank you. Cheers, mate. Josh Brooks there, Taiko Suzuki. He'll make his way up to the podium. Jack will take us through the champagne spray in action. Well, what a first race then for the MCA Insurance British Superbike Championship in association with Pirelli near at the famous TT Circuit. Actually, it was just up the road that they first had uh, the Dutch TT in 1925, and then it appeared here at Assen in 1926, and except for the war years, it's been going ever since. Big Ed sporting a rather glamorous pair of orange shorts for the occasion. There's number 22, Alex Lowes, who finished in third place, and behind him, a man who had plenty of experience around here, Shaky Byrne, on the MS Aprilia in MotoGP back in 2004. And then again with Sterile Garda Ducati, he was here in 2009 and 2010. Scored a couple of eighth places, a ninth and an eleventh. So uh, plenty of track time round here. And Alex Lowe's, well, he also, of course, uh, appeared here during his uh, European Superstock sojourn. He has experience of this track, and he had an enormous amount of time practicing here when he was a stand-in rider with the Tenkate Honda team in World Superbikes last year. This very much their local testing track. So uh, the guys who've had experience of this track are the ones who've enjoyed it the most by the looks of it in Superbikes. Josh Brooks, of course, a former third place man in the World Super Sport Championship. He too has enjoyed experience of the TT circuit here before. But the man who had 15 rostrums last year but lost out in the championship in the end. Shaky Byrne puts himself on top of the table. Just three points, but a vital three points ahead of Josh Brooks in the championship. Shaggy Byrne, who won the championship in 2003 for Paul Bird's team and won it for Birdie again in 2008. Is he looking, well, we know he's looking for that hat-trick of wins with the Paul Bird Motorsport team and with the big boss here, the big bad boss here. It's certainly worked out so far. 
Alex Lowe's there in third place. We knew that the WFR Honda rider would be in the mix. We also knew that Josh Brooks was bound to be somewhere about because he simply always is. And of course, having finished uh, so near in the last couple of years, the Australian is looking to go just that one or two places better. Shaky Byrne, though, gets a great reception for the crowd in the sun as the Union Jacks are waved in the grandstands opposite him on the other side of the good Tim chicane because the sun is indeed coming out here once again. We had a bright sunny day yesterday and it's turning rather like that again here in the north of Holland. And it's, a, it's just perfect, perfect to welcome British superbikes. So there we go, then Shane Byrne takes the win and also takes the lead of the MCE BSB British Championship chase so far for 2012. Primarily because the man standing alongside me, Tommy Hill, uh, was not out in that first race apart from going out to set a quick fast lap there. Um, if you've joined us halfway through the race or you didn't see it at the start, Tommy, tell everybody at home. Yeah, it's not very nice when that champagne sprays down, is it? Tell, tell everybody at home what happened as you were going around on your sighting lap. Well, obviously, uh, we exited the pits, and um, I always like to try and get out a little bit earlier just to try and uh, make sure I get a clear route through the back of the grid onto the front row. But, yeah, unfortunately, I come up to the back of the grid, and it looked busier than ever. Um, I mean, it's a big round for British superbikes and uh, a big big round for um, the Dutch fans as well. And uh, it was busier than ever. I come up to the grid and uh, see a lot of people running around. I got onto the front brake a bit, and before I knew it, one of the mechanics from the other teams come running out, hit my front brake lever, and uh, there I was, you know, flying through the air and... Uh, across my crown jewels and uh, so I've got my breath back a bit and uh, got back up to the front row and unfortunately the, uh, the team had took the bike off the grid and uh, we, uh, we snapped the rear set off, off of the frame so uh, that was going to be it but yeah great work to Swan Yamaha they, uh, they sort of managed it back together a bit of super glue on there and uh, away we went back out again you don't have 100% faith in the bike there we are there back on the bike you know, I wanted to have a bit of a check on the, uh, on the rear set just to, to see what they have done um, but they've done a good job and uh, I had to go back out to try and get a lap time and uh, quickest lap of the race there at the end but we had a few other problems the exhaust were hanging off because we, uh, we had to adjust the exhaust and that was going to be it you know so the team started to adjust uh, the bike ready to get the new chassis ready yeah. because the chassis had snapped where the, uh, the rear set was on so uh, yeah the team were going to be busy and I didn't want to be coming off and uh, not being able to make race two you're in pole position for race two because you went out and set the fastest lap so well done for that at least you salvaged something from it quick question though are we now going to see the MotoGP style front brake uh, lever guards on the Swan Yamaha from the next round? It's surprising actually you said that because uh, last week uh, my team boss Sean Muir mentioned about um, maybe we should start using the, uh, the front brake protectors that are using the GP but uh Hindsight's a lovely thing, and uh, it didn't work for us today. Uh, so, yeah, we're on a good position for uh, for race two, and um, hopefully we can get out there and uh, salvage some points. You know, um, unfortunately for us, the top three, four riders were the showdown riders again. But you know, um, these things are here to test us, and uh, hopefully we can come on fighting through again and uh, get some more points back in the bag and see Tommy Hill and Swan Yammer on the uh, on the top of the podium. Well, it's nice to see the smile back on Tommy Hill's face. Thanks for talking Thank to us, Tommy. Good. We'll see you in Thank the you. second race out there. All right, whilst Tommy heads back to the garage and continues his preparations ready for BSB Race 2 at Assen, we're also going to head off for a short break, and when we come back, we'll start our preparations for the first World Superbike outing at Portimao in Portugal. That man there, Max Biaggi, is in his garage and he's getting ready to go. Marco Melandri, his title rival, is also in his garage ready to go. You can see the guys have got the wet on. That's because it's pouring down at Portimao, back in two. Five points running for that Superbike Cup ahead of Ian Lowry on the Paget's Honda, Nori Hager, Swan Yamaha, Chris Walker on the Primo Bournemouth Kawasaki ahead of Stuart Easton, who's qualified well here, Alistair Seely in 12th ahead of John Kirkham, Graham Gowland, Michael Rutter, Patrick Moff 16th ahead of Peter Hickman, who's qualified well for build based BMW ahead of his teammate Barry Borrell, another fast man this weekend, Lucas Scasser and Dan Linfoot in 20th. 
The starting grid looks like this, or should look like this. Alex Lowe's on pole for WFR Honda. Michael Laverty, Samsung Honda second. Honda 1, 2, 3. Uh, Honda 1, 2, rather. That should read Jakob Smertz, of course, on the split lap. Redmond Aprilia in third place. A brilliant debut appearance in this championship by the Czechoslovakian rider. Josh Brooks held... Uh, uh, Josh Brooks, let me say that again, from up row two, ahead of Lucas Scassa, Shaky Byrne and Stuart Easton. Tommy Bridewell on row four, ahead of Peter Hickman, Patrick Muff and Barry Burrell. And John Kirkham, ahead of Noriyuki Haga, Robin Harms and James Westmoreland. Such a good move on a, such a difficult place to pass. So Shaky Byrne now has the advantage. Uh, shoulder injury? What shoulder injury? What his wife Petra has, has told me just this morning, James, is he's... Oh, and here we're looking at Tommy Hill. Well, he's got a huge amount of ground to make up. He'll also be feeling his way into the motorcycle, checking that everything's all right, James. Yeah, and you know what? It's a mountain to climb. He's got to make a decision whether he pushes on and chances crashing, trying to hard to catch people that really, I think he's got no chance of doing. Uh, and then if he does crash in this one, he's no chance of making race two. So he's really got... Uh, well, big decision to make for Tommy Hill. At the front then, Shaky Byrne, one of his major rivals, two-time British Superbike champion, is in the lead here at the TT circuit. Van Drenta, a lot of experience in World Superbikes and MotoGP round here, of course, for Absolutely. Shaky Byrne. Absolutely. And you know it's going to be fascinating, this, because it's been so hard on tyres. Rear tyres have been wearing out, and it's not like they've been getting three or four good laps out, and then they've been plateauing and been able to get, you know, 18 more laps. It's a fact is they've been going about maybe eight, nine, ten laps. 12 maximum and then dropping off a cliff that's what the exact same was from Tommy Hill the tyres drop off a cliff and there's nothing left you can well welcome back to Assen we have a huge crowd here massive crowd has turned out both of locals and British fans travelling abroad to take in the very finest of British Superbike action the news from Swan Yamaha is Tommy Hill has not yet left the garage we will see if he can make the pit lane for the start of the first British Superbikes race then let's go over to our commentators James Whittam and Jack Burnicle well, from Barry Sheen's first ever 500cc Grand Prix win in 1975 to Chris Walker's memorable World Superbike victory in the wet here in 2006, the circuit van Drenthe at Assen has played an important part in the careers of many of Britain's road racing stars over the decades. And finally, the MCE British Superbike Championship arrives here in person. But unfortunately, possibly without Tommy Hill and Swan Yamaha for the first race. At the moment, he has a 10-point lead in the showdown over Josh Brooks, Taiko Suzuki. Shaky Byrne, two points further back on Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki. Michael Laverty, Samsung Honda's fourth ahead of pole setter Alex Lowe's WFR Honda in fifth and Tommy Bridewell's supersonic BMW suffering a bit from flu Tommy that is not the BMW seventh place for James Westmoreland on 120 I don't know what he's doing out there to be honest maybe he's just making sure it's all right for race two Josh Brooks carves inside the split lap Redmond Aprilia then not surprising that Jakob Smert's going to get steered back a bit in the early stages he's now running fourth just ahead of Stuart Easton as they come pouring down the fearfully fast an exciting return run towards the final chicane here at the TT circuit Van Drenta the leader then ooh, almost about to change then Michael Laverty at the moment has the advantage remember Shaky Byrne coming back from that shoulder injury he's just taken pain killing tablets he hasn't done anything more it's not strapped up the right shoulder uh, he's just coping with it as he best he can it was Tristan Palmer and Victor Cox the two fallers we had earlier in the lap Victor Cox making his debut in this championship. Uh, well, sure. what I mean is in the uh, Superbike races. Yep. What a shame then for the national superstock rider. At the front on the second of 18 laps, it's Laverty versus Byrne. Oh. Josh Brooks right Brooks. in there going wide, looking for some uh, with some intent up the inside of the Kawasaki. Yeah, that's a classic move here uh, into the Strube and just uh, you run it wide uh, on the right and then that puts a look at... Chamber now up the inside, a fast piece of track and he's made it stick, that's a... Ahead of us, we have the first race for the MCE Insurance British Superbike Championship ever around 
this beautiful 2.83 mile circuit, the TT circuit Van Drenthe here in Assen in the north of Holland and a great start from the front row of the grid for Michael Laverty, second place for Jakob Kubersmert from the Czech Republic making his debut in the series, very very nervous before the start, not really knowing what he was pitching himself into, he loves this place though, his first ever World Superbike podium was scored right here at Assen, he's running in second place, Josh Brooks third and a Kawasaki already down, two Somebody bikes down. Well, that's one of the GB Motors Hondas as well, I think that could be... I think that's either, yeah, that could be... Number 67, Shaky Burn is up there, so too on Rapid Solicitors Kawasaki is the little Scotch Hill. Eastern. Here's Tommy Hill, have they got that bike going well enough for him to get back in the race? He comes up pit lane, everything to do then for the reigning British Superbike champion and Swan Yamaha. It's difficult to see what he's going to do from back there, he's almost half a lap behind Jacker. And, and he was saying just a minute ago that there was a crack in the chassis, now whether, I don't know, 